key is focusing on affordability. If you look at what has happened in the Indian market, um, most players have tried to maximize on price, right? You've tried to maximize on profits. And they've not focused on the entry-level consumer. <clears throat> if they have a series of products, if they have 10 or 15 models, maybe one or two models are below 5,000 rupees and the rest of them are above. We have 38 different models below 5,000 rupees. So we have a very wide range of products on that. Uh, you know, we, we have a number of products now uh, below 2,000 rupees. So we've been trying very hard for a very long time uh, to deliver affordable devices. And it's not just devices. We bundle these devices with valuable content uh, as we've done today in the partnership with the SMAD and the, and the educational Punjabi apps. Uh, to date, all of our devices that are calling tabs, uh, we've bundled in a year of mobile internet access uh, free of charge within the 2,000 rupee device or the 3,000 rupee device. So that has been a big focus for us is to make sure that affordability is there. And with that focus, we've gone out to reach to that customer base. Um, and uh, I think that that has, has, has been very important for us. Um, uh, if you look at the overall market, while it's 35, 37% of the overall market are share, in the entry level segment, that is the segment that is below 5,000 rupees, we have 70% market share. When the market share is literally that large, what happens is that um, <clears throat> you cannot, um, it just means that there's nobody else there, right? It's not that we are beating other brands, it's that they're not competing in that field. There are much larger brands in India. If they want to be aggressive, uh, they can certainly be aggressive. But uh, at that level, they're not competing. And, and that has allowed and has really created an open field uh, for us uh, because the growth is uh, with, at, at that level in India. The, the fueling factor still is the huge market. You know, there, there's a billion people in, in India that are not on the internet. Uh, if you see any of my presentations, the number of kids that are not in school and the whole issue of the quality of education that is being delivered, uh, that's a huge market and in reality, even by placing 15, 20 lakh devices a year, uh, we're not making a real dent in it. You know, the, the kind of numbers we need are 10 to 100 times greater to make the kind of dent. So the market is so huge. And to us, the way to expand, uh, you know, to, to fuel growth is really just reach out to more customers. Um, and that's what we've been trying to do. There's a, there's a perception that the market is in decline. And the reality is that if you look at the overall market, that may be true. But if you look at our segment, that is the 5,000 rupee segment, that segment has grown uh, over the last three years, four years, at least 20 to 25% aggregate year on year, right? So we don't look at the overall market because the, the people in the high end, if, if their portion is, is contracting, it is because they're reaching saturation on their target customer in, in India. You know, the number of potential buyers for the iPad in India at the current price point is limited. Whereas the number of potential buyers for a 2,000 or 3,000 rupee calling tab with a year of free internet access uh, is, is a huge billion percent market, which really remains unaddressed. So um, the perception that the market is contracting obviously has a negative impact because then the channel is less inclined to, to promote it and, and, and support it. Uh, but despite that, uh, by focusing on TV home shopping and educational programs on television uh, and, and educating our customer and making creating greater awareness uh, on television, uh, we've been successful in reaching out to that customer. So we um, uh, now have two manufacturing facilities in India, one in Amritsar and the second one in Hyderabad. And uh, we did an, an IPO in, the, in Canada in 2014, raised 150 CR. Uh, we've invested that and another 50 CR beyond that. So we've invested around 200 CR. Now we've not generated enough profit to, to get that back, to get the ROI on that, but it's, it's a process that, that's continuing. We are now, we've grown from, in 2011, we were eight people 
in India. Today we are over 1,200 people in India. We've grown from doing 80 lakhs in revenue in 2011 to doing about uh, 250 crores in revenue in the last year. And we believe we are, we are on route to probably around 400 to 500 CR. Uh, there's a little bit of a bump, a blip because of demonetization, but we, we think that the future still is very, very bright. So we're confident that the investment we've made in India has been worthwhile. Not only are we generating jobs and, and manufacturing product in India that primarily gets used in India, but also gets exported beyond India. But we are empowering people with, with tools that, that uh, we think uh, uh, give them a future uh, which could be very bright. Of course, we are hoping that things like GST will come through, that they'll get implemented well, which will make India finally one homogenous market. You know, in the EU, all these countries got together to create one market as a one big market block that allowed their companies to get nurtured and grow and compete in the world. So the disadvantage in India has been that economically, logistically, it has not acted like one country. It has really acted like 30 different countries. And that has been a big problem for businesses to grow in the Indian environment. There are not only language barriers, but there are logistical state boundary barriers. And the hope is with GST, that will allow easy movement of goods across the country. And we are we're big proponents of that and hoping that that will make uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, sales in India and, and penetration of the Indian market uh, for, for most players much easier. Always focused on educational content with, with our devices. We, we felt that the hardware is not enough. We have to have access with it, and this is why the relationship with Arcom and the free internet access that comes with the device has been very important. But also that uh, educational content needs to be in there. Over the last few years, we have promoted and produced and supported a lot of hackathons to help create entrepreneurship. We've partnered with many content providers to bring educational content on these devices to, for students. Uh, we work now with a company called Vismad from Chandigarh, uh, which is a very successful <coughs> IT services company based out of Chandigarh that has also been making Punjabi language uh, animation uh, for, for a number of years. Uh, they've created over 100 uh, Punjabi language and Gurumukhi script apps. It's a huge amount of apps, uh, and we wanted to get that out to the consumer. And we felt the best way to do that was pre-bundle them with device in the device, call it the Vidya Tap Punjabi, and offer that to the market. And this is our first e effort with the regional language tab. We will do other such tabs in the future also. In fact, last week we launched a six-inch uh, smartphone also, our, our largest uh, phone uh, that we, we brought out. And um, we have our first 4G phone finally coming out in the next three or four weeks. Uh, even though we have an aggressive hardware uh, schedule for next year, at least eight or nine new hardware launches over the next year, uh, the most exciting thing for us is that we hope over the next couple of months, finally, to be able to launch our data plans. We've applied for a virtual network operator VNO license with the Department of Telecom, and uh, we are waiting for uh, FIPB approval, uh, the uh, Foreign Investment Promotion Board approval. Uh, and once that's done, we hope we can get our license and launch very aggressive data plans. And the advantage of these data plans will be that we'll bring affordable internet access uh, to people uh, irrespective of what device they have, not only that are using our devices, but also other devices uh, bring in internet access that is as low as 10 or 20 rupees a month. Well, it's all, for us, it's about reach, right? Uh, a lot of players in India have been very successful focused only on e-commerce. Uh, but the problem is that e-commerce reaches only 20 to 30 percent of the Indian population, doesn't reach the rest of the Indian population. Um, uh, as I said to you, uh, you know, uh, print media uh, also has a certain reach, uh, and this is why we focused on TV as the way to really get it out there. We, we have a reasonable retail presence. We offer our devices to about 10,000 stores, and we support our retail partners. Um, you know, the e-commerce the e uh, side of it is not very big for us, so, the, uh, the, so that doesn't undercut the retail channel in, in any way. Um, 
and TV home shopping is a unique segment uh, by itself. So um, for us, uh, in essence, uh, it's all or primarily offline because our target customer uh, is not yet on the internet. We're trying to bring them on the internet. So uh, we have about 450 service centers across the country. We continue to expand that. We have a, a workforce of 38 people whose job it is to set up these new service centers and support them and, and, and so on. In India, to, to get to that reach is, is very important. Um, we have two manufacturing facilities for this reason that we can have supply that's closer to our customer. And over the next couple of years, we'll probably have a third one also set up. Uh, expanding the field service organization for us has been very important. As we've grown on the infomercial part of it, what we've ended up doing is that we've ended up setting up call centers in multiples of languages. And with this, um, um, it has also allowed us to set up tech support in multiples of languages. Uh, so all those things go hand in hand for us. The mission is empowerment. <coughs> Today, knowledge is power, and access to the internet gives you knowledge. And there should be nobody without that. There are countries in the world, Scandinavian countries, that have passed laws that say that internet access is a fundamental human right. So they believe it's that important. We believe it's that important. It helps you with education, it helps you with commerce, it helps you with knowledge. And we think that everybody should be able to afford and get easy access to the internet, and that's our mission. Thank you for watching this video. Also, please subscribe our page and like us on social media to help us in reaching more people. Till we come up with our next video, goodbye and take care.